I love him. I mean, I love him. He is head over heels for me. I'm not kidding. (laughs) People are like, well, that's kind of arrogant. There's a lot of people. (laughs) Your God's too small. My gosh. He never looks away. He's always looking right at me. And you too, if you just catch his gaze, your life will be totally surrendered. Because that's what it's all about. Where's the keys? Help me, Jesus. Where'd they go? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm just, they'll hear me. Keys. Uh, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do. I love, it helps the medicine go down. Are you with me? It's like that spoonful of sugar, but I don't believe in sugar, so worship, right? Uh, wow, I'm... <clears throat> I'm so thankful to be here. This feels like home. Like it really does. It really does. Every time, it just feels like home. I just want to honor you, Pastor Mac and Lena. I just, you're special. Real special. Thank you. Wow. Oh, okay. Let's get serious here. It's my lovely wife, Jackie's in the house. Come on, stand up. She's the most amazing super mom ever, ever. Uh, I try to do what she does, and I'm like, please help me. (laughs) She goes away for a day, and I'm like, okay, I got this. I got this. Kids, everybody help dad. (laughs) I'm not kidding. Just amazing. I'm just so thankful. Um, Pastor Mac was sharing today during offering, and I, I I I wanna go to that verse, actually. It's in Revelation, and he was sharing the reality of what worship looked like. But not the, yeah. Go to Revelation chapter 12 for me. Please. Whoa, there it is. You're, you're something else, bud. I could, now see, I could just sit here. Oh. Mm. I was sharing with the students today, and I love worship. Like, I mean, I love it. And God doesn't need you to worship him. He, he's perfectly secure without you doing it. Like, he's, he's pretty secure. You know that? Like, you don't worship him, and he goes, there it is, okay. Like, God, do you understand? It's, it's all we can do. But God knows that when you worship him, you become like the one you worship. And sometimes people miss the worship that's for him to get to the word that's for them. Like, we come in late, they're going to worship for least a half hour we can get there we can get there right before he speaks shame on us to miss the worship that's for him to get to the word that's for you that's not good worship is ministering unto the Lord to where I'm actually where I'm actually loving him with every part of me but I'm actually ministering to him it's it's like the priests, they minister unto the Lord. So, so worship isn't just about singing a great song or being moved with goosebumps. It's, I worship you with my whole life. And so this scripture here, we're talking about the word of our testimony. It says in, verse, in, in chapter 12, verse 11, it says, and they overcame him. They overcame him, who? The enemy. How do we overcome? The blood of the lamb. Because the word of their testimony, so powerful, so important. But if you miss this last part, you're done. This is the part that the enemy wipes out of Scripture. I mean, he can't wipe it out of Scripture, but he can wipe it out of our mind. Because we still hold on to us. I don't know if you know this is key. Like, the Bible doesn't say, deny the devil, pick up your cross and follow him. 
Do you know that's not scripture? Do you understand that the devil's not the issue, you are? Hey, come on, now look, it's gonna be, I'm gonna get up all in your grill right now. Like the gospel sets you free from you. But if you don't get free from you, you can't live in freedom. Because you're still in the way. The Bible says deny your, pick up your cross and follow him. So how can we really follow him if we're still in the way? We don't sing, and it's all about me. It's all about me. Would that be weird? That's like so whacked out. That's crazy. We would never do that. No, it's all about him. But it says that they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their own life unto death. What does that mean? I mean, I'm talking about death. See, the fear of death has been crushed, and righteousness is the only word. Right there, righteousness crushes that fear of death thing. See, when I'm right with God, it doesn't matter who I'm wrong with. When people are against me, it doesn't matter. God is for me. And if I see this and understand the reality of what I'm carrying here on this planet, see, I'm, I'm carrying the authority of heaven. All of heaven is backing me up. All of heaven. Like, I'm a joint heir. Like, it's real. But that's not just... Like, boasting rights. That's the reality of my life. Like, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Everything that Jesus Christ relied upon fully and completely to further God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. He preached the kingdom of God a hundred more times than he preached being born again. But being born again is essential to unlock your potential. Being born again is the starting place. That's the launching pad. It's you were not fathered right. You didn't get brought up right. You didn't get what you need when you were first birthed. Everybody, doesn't matter how good, how bad, everybody must be born again. Don't care if your parents were the most amazing parents on the planet. If you're not born again, you will not see eternity with God. You will spend eternity away from God. But when someone prays a prayer to get born again, it's essential to unlock your potential. But Jesus didn't say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to heaven except by me. Even though it's ultimately true that in the end, heaven is our destination, if you miss this crucial point, destroying hell won't be your mission. You being destroyed by it on this earth until you get to heaven will be. 1 John 3, 8 is the mission statement for the Christian life. Jesus was anointed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. So the Christian life that is born again and filled with the same spirit, Romans 8, 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you and will quicken your mortal body. Yes, he'll quicken it when it's resurrection time, but he will quicken it now. I need him to quicken this body now. I need to quicken my senses now. I need to be able to discern between both good and evil. I need to have my senses trained to discern between both good and evil. In 1 Peter, it talks about desiring the pure milk of the word. When we get born again, when we get saved, the most important thing that you could possibly do is get into this place in a posture of prayer. You go into your secret place, you seek the Father. When, when no one's looking, you seek the Father, and then he rewards you when everyone's looking. But if I'm seeking him for stuff, I'm not getting stuff. I'm seeking him for him, and I get him, and stuff comes with him. It's important. It's priority. The priority is seeking the Father in secret. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. And he talks about eternal life in John 17, verse 3. He says, this is eternal life, that they might know you, God, Father, that might not, they might know the Father, the one and only, the one and only, the one and only. Allah's not in there. He's not, I'm sorry, he's just not. He's not. Muhammad's not in there. This not in there. Harry Christian is not in there. Just not in there. The Father's in there. Jesus didn't come to introduce us to just God. He came to introduce us 
to the Father. And when you get born again, you get refathered. That's what born again means. It means to have a brand new dad, a brand new father. His name is Abba. Abba. And if we don't connect with that, we will allow our earthly parents to determine our identity. There's so many Christians caught up in that. Some dads get upset when I say this. Well, I'm good to my kid. You ain't God. Sorry. You're just not. And you're not perfect. Only one was perfect. Jesus. Do you know that he came to represent the Father? He said, I and the Father are one, and the Pharisees wanted to kill him. The Father and I are one. What? Let's kill him. He was making himself equal with God. And even though in Philippians 2 it says, even though he had equality with God, he considered himself of no reputation. He wasn't trying to make a name for himself. He was coming to reveal the Father. The Father. The Father. Are you guys with me? This is so powerful. When you connect with him as a father, not just God, not just this, this God that doesn't want anything to do with you, this God that has more things on his plate than just you. That's just the weirdest thing, that you could be upset about thinking that God's really, really, his, that his gaze is really on each person. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So if God so loved the world, then his eyes are on the world. Like everyone. Like there is nobody that he's not seeing. You look at Psalm 139. You can't hide from God. Like you couldn't make. David said I couldn't even make my, de- my bed in hell. Yet you're there. In the sea and you're there. The farthest place ever. You're there. Your presence. So since his presence is, is always where we are. Let's not ignore it anymore. Oh, man. I'm just going to be. I'll be free for all of you tonight. I'm not kidding. Because I'm, I wake up loved by God. I go to sleep loved by God. I wake up in the middle of the night. I'm loved by God. I walk by a mirror. I see you in there. People are like, God is totally arrogance. No, it's Godfidence. I believe him. It's faith. I believe him. I am fully possessed by Jesus. You are going to be possessed You're going to be possessed by one of two things. The world or him. There's no straddle. There's no like middle place. You know there's no gray in the Christian life. Do you understand there's no like, well, you know. Well, you know. People are like, what about purgatory? There's no gray in the Christian life. None. You're either for Isn't that amazing? The only gray is or. You're for or against. You gather or you scatter. You're either dead or you're alive. You're either blind or you see. You're either lost or you're found. Or is that middle area, but there's no gray in that. It's a decision. Are you with me? It's a decision. You're either this way or you're that way. You're either this way or you're that way. You're either over here or you're over there. You can't be here. You don't understand. See, here's the deal. So many people go through life. I've talked to so many people. Man, I'm not state ready yet, man. You know what I mean? I got, you know, I got things to do, life to live. Man, my mom praying for me, but I'm just, you know, I ain't ready. Well, I got news for you, man. See, we got this picture that eternity is like somewhere out here where we're just going to one day make that decision. Eternity is right here. Bam. It's over. Right there. It's over. I'm talking you are here, and then you just, whoa. Eternity's not out here. Oh, my gosh. That's not how it works. It's boom. One second. Boom. And I want my one second, however long it takes whether I'm martyred, however long it takes, buddy. I just want it to be like this. Hey. (laughs) You don't understand. I live for this day. To live is Christ here. And to die is gain here. 
To live is Christ and to die is gain. God's not looking for people that just want to do church on a Sunday. He's looking for people to tabernacle with him. He's looking for people to be the temple of the Lord. He's looking for people that have a broken and contrite heart. On this one, I will look. And he who trembles at my word. How can you tremble at something you never read? Well, I just don't get it. I need a pastor. Wrong! Your pastor is not your connection to Jesus. God gave us all a book. We're like, I hate books. I hate reading. No. The great news is, is this thing's not for your brain. The reason why you hate it is you're trying to get it here. The Bible's not meant for your brain. It's meant for your heart. Your heart can take you places your brain can't fit. He's not looking for the smartest of people. He's looking for the surrender of people. He's not looking for people that are brilliant and have gone to school for 12 years. I mean, if you do, that's awesome. All he's looking for you to do is get born again, surrender, and admit that your way is not the right way. His way is the only way. And his way is the way to the Father. And first connection I need to make is with my dad. I need to meet him and know him. I need to let him love me and be loved by him. I don't want to go and stand before God. And having seen all the miracles and seen the dead raised and the blind see and the, the, just the lame walk. I don't want to see that stuff and stand before God and be like, didn't I do all these things for you, Lord? I don't want to hear him say, away from me, I never knew you. There is a difference between you saying that you love God and knowing that you're loved by God. There is a difference between you saying that you know about God and truly knowing God. Because eternal life, when Jesus says, this is eternal life. By the way, it's the Lord's Prayer. It's not our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's the model prayer. The Lord's Prayer is John 17. That's when Jesus lifted up his eyes and prayed. He says eternal life is knowing God. And that word know is a Greek word called gnoso. And that word gnoso means to know, like Adam knew Eve. <laughs> like intercourse. Like that's how you're supposed to know God. People are like, well, that's, I'm not comfortable with that. <laughs> well, that's why you got a comforter. <laughs> yeah, but that's just weird, no. It's love. We've just perverted it. It's covenant. It's the two becoming one. That's why we have marriage in church. That's why we talk about covenant. It's becoming one. The two have become one. If you read scripture and you look and see, you have become spirit to spirit. You have become one spirit with him. When you get born again, your spirit and Holy Spirit link up and they never unlink. You become flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Do you know that's the same thing with marriage? When my wife and I came together, when we got married, we became one flesh. And that's what God is saying. You become one flesh with God. You become, your body doesn't belong to you anymore. Oh gosh. You're not yours. So why are you holding yourself back from him? And since you're not yours, and you don't belong to you anymore, when you say yes to Jesus, when you say yes, God comes in, he's like, I'll take the whole house, thank you. We're like, well, I'm, I'll just give you this right now, because I'm not, I'm not okay with all of it, because I want to hold on to me a little. I like being a target for the devil, just... I'm not done kicking and screaming yet. I mean, we don't, we don't know that, but that's really what it is. People give 75% to God. They're like, I'm 75% I'm in, Lord. Really, really amazing. Did you ever go to a store and get a water that said 75% pure? Good. I don't care how high the alkalinity is. If it's 75% pure, it ain't going in here. It's, if you label it that, would you even drink a water that said 95% pure? Why not? 
That ain't right. So why would you not 100% for God? Oh. Let me read the scripture again just in case. Oh, how many of you got this? How many of you read it? What do you think? We brought a bunch. They're out there. Please get one. It literally is life changing. We've seen so many atheists come to God. They read the book. They're like, what is this crazy guy? And all of a sudden they're halfway through. Ooh, boom. And little kids can read this thing. Like I made it so a little child can read it. And it's all about our jump into the supernatural and the reality of what that looks like. Because when I started praying for the sick, my wife was not okay for that. It took nine months. It was like birth giving. It was labor to get through. Nobody wanted to do it. Nobody wanted to go with me. I drugged my little seven and a half year old kid with me. She saw so many miracles in the grocery stores and in Walmart. And I saw somebody get healed in a service. And I was like, oh my gosh, if God's doing it here. I'm praying for everyone. Not everybody's on page with that. Not everybody's comfortable with, with praying for people. And the only reason we are not comfortable is because this part right here. They did not love their life even when faced with death. Blood of the Lamb, word of our testimony. Love not their own life unto death. See, here's the deal. When you said yes to Jesus, you signed up to die. Period. Do you understand when you said yes, you signed up to die? I agree to die. Do you know you have to die to something? Are you guys with me? This is like not the most comfortable. This isn't the most comfortable message. People are like, I don't even know why people come see me no more. Because I, I don't have anything else to talk about except the surrendered life that walks in freedom and victory that stomps on the devil's neck every day. It's kind of crazy. People show up like, hey man, I love you. And they're like, they watch videos and they listen to teachings and stuff. Then they tell me their testimony. Some young man came up tonight and just told me about his life and he saw a video that we did. We were in the Capitol. And I was kneeling down and I was praying and I got up and I started singing in the Capitol and then the police came and stopped me, but it was really fun. <laughs> and he said to me, I mean, it, it really touched my heart. I just get to see it all over. It's just a, a, a senior graduated, right? He said, you don't understand. I saw what relationship looked like two years ago and I fully gave myself to God. Yeah. Guys, we... We are people that are supposed to live by example. That people could see the fire in our hearts, the fire in our eyes, the fire in our lives. That you would actually, it says it in 2 Timothy, it says that I would actually endure the suffering. I don't know if you know this, man, but the Christian life is suffering. You suffer for doing good, not for doing evil. You suffer for doing good, and by suffering for doing good, it actually is an inspiration to Christians that are petrified. When Christians are petrified and they see you step out, and all of a sudden, wait a second, I could do that. I can, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead did that miracle through him, he could do it through me. Same Holy Spirit that that's teaching Todd, because I don't know if you know it, but the Holy Spirit is our teacher. It says you have one teacher. Call no one on earth your teacher. You have one teacher, the Christ. Christ wasn't Jesus' last name. It wasn't Joseph and Mary Christ had Jesus Christ. It wasn't. It was Jesus, the one anointed by God, but that anointing was the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. And by the way, it says the same thing. It's in Matthew 23, 9 and 10. Called no one on earth your teacher. Called no one on earth your father. Isn't that something? You can have spiritual fathers. But if a spiritual father doesn't point you to the father, they might just be making you codependent upon them. 
instead of the Father. And if I don't realize who the Father is in my life, then I'm going to live with an orphan mindset. And I can't afford to live like an orphan when I've been made a son. Man, I lived my whole life that way. Jesus came and set me free from that orphan mindset. I remember being in Teen Challenge and, and I was up there and, and God, revealed, God revealed to me the reality of wisdom. About wisdom, just the reality of me being wisdomless. It was the first scripture in James that made sense to me. And I was like, because they were talking, the day before they were talking about trials in Teen Challenge. Trials, consider it joy when you face trials. I'm like, you guys are out of your mind. Like, I'm in an orange jumpsuit in front of a judge. I'm going to jail. That's not joy, that's stupid. I'm serious, because I had no idea what they were talking about. Trial. I've been on so many, I've been on trial too many times. And I'm in that script, I'm in there trying to search for that. And I see this, if you lack wisdom, ask God who gives to all generously without finding fault. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is brand new. Never read a book before, couldn't read, had comprehension disorder, 34 years old, never read a book. Just pushed me through school, got through. I could search to find the answers. Anybody can. And that scripture hit me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't have any wisdom. I'm wisdomless. And I'm in the prayer room by myself at 6.30 in the morning screaming, I don't have any wisdom. That's the answer. Oh my God, I'm wisdomless. I mean, I'm talking celebration. I am freaking out, like psychotically freaking out. Oh my gosh. I'm freaking out. Because I looked at the next part of wisdom, the wisdom of God is not sensual and demonic and full of self-seeking and envy and every evil thing because that's what we're doing when we say I got wisdom brother and it's not the Lord it says that every evil not some evil every evil thing is in there every all evil is there it's where selfish ambition lies all about me it would be horrible if it was all about me in the name of the Lord Wisdom from above is peaceable and gentle, willing to yield, full of good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom of God, and that's what he wants us to have. And I'm so excited. I'm, I'm in the prayer room like, oh, my gosh, freaking out. And then I saw that trial thing. I'm like, Lord, I still don't get it. I hate trials. He said, that's because you're guilty. Always. I'm like, Yeah always and he whispered and said I say you're not guilty and I was like that's stupid then he said it again I say you're not guilty and it hit me and I went oh my god what the blood of Jesus <laughs> he who knew no sin became sin for me. Jesus, who never sinned, he never missed it, he never missed the mark, never. 613 laws, 10 commandments, never missed one, ever, not ever. And he didn't know any sin, yet on that tree, he became sin. Marred beyond any man ever, he was, he was obliterated on that tree. They whipped him and ripped his flesh apart. For our healing, by his stripes we are healed. But for our identity, why? Because he was unrecognizable on that tree. You couldn't recognize it was Jesus. It says he was unrecognizable. Isaiah 53, Isaiah 54. It's powerful. Couldn't recognize him. Why? Why did he have to become unrecognizable? Because we were created in the image of God. And because we forfeited our identity in the garden, you and I were unrecognizable. And Jesus had to become unrecognizable so that you and I could become recognizable to the Father again. That's super powerful, man. We sing that song. Well, I can wash away my sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What well, can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. There's nothing else. It's the blood. It's the blood of the Lamb. John the Baptist didn't say, Behold the Lamb of God that forgives the sin of the world. He didn't say that. The scripture says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away. There's a difference between forgiving and taking away. Yes, he forgave you, but you'll still remember. But if he took him away, and that becomes reality, and the word becomes, and faith hits the word, all of a sudden, you're not guilty. Yeah, but I did all the stuff. I get it, but then you died. (laughs) This is so crazy. Todd White hurt and destroyed so many people, and I was lost. And I hurt and maimed and destroyed and stole and killed. Like, I hurt everyone. I hurt everyone. Killed people's hopes, killed people's dreams, stole from everyone and anyone, threatened my girl's life. I threatened Jackie's life for seven years. That if she left me, I was going to take her out and then take myself out if she cheated on me. And we're boyfriend and girlfriend. Man, I I did all that stuff, so how can he take it away? Because the blood of Jesus is the Old Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats and the the ashes of a heifer. And the reality of the blood sacrifice in the Old Testament wasn't able to clean the inside of the cup. See, the outside was the only thing. And it was only, it was only till next year on the Day of Atonement when they had to offer blood again. But inside their conscience was condemned. Moses had the ministry of condemnation. It was engraved on stones. It was the, it was the ministry of condemnation. And it had glory. It's in, it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. It says, but we have been given a different ministry. We do not have the ministry of condemnation. Yet the church sits, the majority of the church sits in guilt, shame, and condemnation and is bound by the law. Even when they come to Christ. Because they're wanting to enjoy the glory of condemnation. But Jesus Christ paid a price for us to have the ministry of righteousness which has much more glory and no condemnation. Oh, buddy, it's the blood of the Lamb. It's the reality of the cross of Jesus. And he set me free from from sin. He set me free from death. He set me free from fear of it. Man, gosh, he, he set me free from me. Oh my gosh. I used to enjoy sin. It was my career. I was a professional. I'm not kidding. I was a professional. I didn't even know that's what it was called. I just knew it was called fun to me. But then I got saved. I mean really saved. Like not a little bit. See man, you better know what you got saved from and got saved on to. Because if you don't know what you got saved from and what you got saved to, you'll be straddling an oar. Lost or found. Blind or see. Dead or alive. Are you with me? Half in and half out. That's not surrender. You can't overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Unless your testimony is the reality of not loving your life unto death. Oh, I'm so serious, buddy. When you go up to somebody, you want to share your faith with them. You want to share. And all of a sudden that fear thing comes. Well, not here, not now. Because it comes. The enemy is a professional, buddy. He doesn't want you to ever share with somebody. You know, it's not just the job of the evangelist, guys. 
I don't know if you know it or not, but evangelists start to equip you. The saints, if you see that, if you see what you are, like God doesn't call you a sinner anymore when you get saved. You were a sinner that got saved by grace. Through faith, now you're a saint. Wow. Is that amazing? Pastors, apostles, teachers, evangelists, prophets, all the five-fold ministry is for the equipping of the sinners for the work of ministry. That doesn't even sound right. It doesn't sound right because it's not in the Bible. For the equipping of the saints. What are you? What is a saint? A holy one set apart. Set apart. For what? That you would, that you would, that you would display your good works and they would glorify your Father in heaven. Oh, gosh, I love it. If you see the reality of what God calls you. If you see, God calls me a saint. Some people think it's arrogant. Religion thinks it's arrogance and, her- and heresy. That's because religion was screaming at relationship on a tree. And relationship on that tree looked and said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Oh. Yeah. All right. Let me share just a let me share just a couple of uh, a couple of recent testimonies, and then we're going to pray. You guys, all right? Yeah. I, look, I would I would highly suggest you not leaving here unsaved. I'm, I'm talking highly, like <laughs> like do you want to go to hell? Okay, good. <laughs> this is so crazy. We're like, what? That was, that was rude. <laughs> that was totally rude. Told me, asked me if I want to go to hell. Of course not. Do you know that you must be born again? There's no other name other than the name of Jesus. We will see miracles. We will see healing. We will. Why? Because it's impossible for it not to happen. Because God confirms the word, because that's what he does, because he's amazing. We're like, I, I just love it. It's the confirmation of the gospel. These signs will follow them that believe. They lay hands on the sick. The sick shall recover. It's just believers, but you have to be a believer to do it, so it's important that we believe. Amen? Well, this is awkward. But since we're talking about it, would you like to be free from all that stuff that you've done and all the bondage and all that junk, would you like to, yes or no? Okay, good, all right. So, so if you've never said yes to Jesus and you would like to, just stand up right where you're at, please. Come on, let's do this. Don't be scared, come on. Stand up, where are you? Come on, come on. Amen, amen, come on. Is that, what? Yeah. Come on. 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 Who else? If you never said yes to Jesus and you would like to, let's do this. Come on. Stand up. Stop being a chicken and stand up and give your life to the King. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Who else? Let's do this. Who else? Who else? Who else? You never have said yes to Jesus, but you're like, I'm done living this. I want to I wanna go out. I want to be free. If you're here and you want to be free and you've never done this, look, I know there are people that have backslid. Let's slide home right now. Like, who are you? You have backslidden away from God and you want to slide home. Where are you? Come on. Come on. Slide home. Slide home. Slide home. Come on. Slide home. I want all y'all to make your way down here. Come on, hurry up. Come down here. Come on. Come on. Hey, if they stood up around you, don't you let them sit back down. Get down here. Yes. Love you, bro. Bless you. Yes. Woo-hoo. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. No fear. Come on, man. Come on. Bless you, champion. 
Yeah. Ooh, this is exciting. Oh, my. Look at you. That's my hotel. That's my hotel desk, man. Come on. So good. Come on. Yes. Uh, uh. I'm just doing fist bumps. You guys get with that? Come on. Don't hurt me. Okay. All right. Look at that. Come on. This is glory. This is glory. Because we want to pray. Huh? Okay. Okay. His mother wants okay. Him to know Jesus. Amen. Well, I want them to, too. Really? And the other one is saying that she is into Wicca. Okay. She's well, I used to be into Wicca too. Please, but Please. Jesus set me free. Of course, what's their names? Judith. Okay. Jimmy. If you got kids and you're standing in proxy and you want prodigals to come home, stand to your feet. We're going to pray for them all right now. Yeah. Look, look around. All these parents do the same thing. Okay? Okay. Jimmy. All right. Okay. And Stephanie's wife. Okay. And they want to leave. Okay. All right. And they say she can't have a baby. Okay. Well, Jesus is but bigger you know than what? that. I got bit by a poisonous mosquito. Yeah. And the doctor said, I have good news and bad news. I said, he says, the good news is you'll walk again. It's okay. The bad news is you'll never have kids again. Okay. I had two already. Come on. And I ended up having two more. Hey. I, said, I know the God that knows you, yeah. and he knows me. Amen. And he can Amen. Stand right here. Stand right here. We're going to pray right now. Okay, we're standing in proxy, and then all these people up here. Come on. Oh, my. Woo! Oh, come on. Because there are people up here in this line that have kids that they need to be born again. Who are you? Where? Yep. Oh, gotcha. That's okay. Yeah. Stand there, let's pray. Can I get a, a female pastor with her, please? Do you have a female pastor here that can come and help me? I'm going to have a female pastor stand with you right now, okay? That's the, that's the heart cry of a mom. That's the heart cry of a mom. I, we got you. 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 Uh, look, I don't know if you know that I, I just, this is so important because see, hell is not a place that's comfortable. Have you ever, have you ever burned the tip of your finger? Do you know what that feels like to burn the tip? Have you ever held it in the oil for 10 seconds? No way, dude. You're like, ah, right? done. Now can you imagine holding your finger in the oil for 10 seconds? This isn't a fear thing. This is a real thing. Like people are like, well I don't believe in hell. Well I'm really sorry Jesus talked about it more than anybody on the planet. So it says there's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It says the fire is not quenched. Can you imagine holding your finger in the oil for a minute? Can you imagine holding your hand in the oil, a fist in the oil for a there's no possible way. You can't even fathom that. Now, imagine being in something like that complete body for 10 minutes, for 20 minutes, for an hour, for, for, for two hours, for a week. Can you imagine being in there for a week? Well, no, we'd be dead. Of course you would. But there is no death then. <laughs> Do you understand that in hell there's no death? That you're already dead, but it's eternal burning. It's real. We don't have a revelation of what that really is. I read a book called The Divine Revelation of Hell by a, la a lady named uh, a, someone Baxter. Oh my gosh. My family read it. It was petrifying. It's not a fear thing. Like, oh my gosh, I'm petrified. No. It's a place that none of us have to go. Ever. So when we say make a decision, we're saying make an eternal decision. But make a decision now so that you can stop others from ever having to see that place, man. Ever, like her kids, like everybody's kids that's standing. Let's just pray right now. You guys ready? 
I want you all to know up front what you're doing. You're saying, I'm fully giving my life to Jesus. Are you with me? Because if you're not ready, then leave. Are you ready? I'm saying, are you ready? Yeah. Fully. You, are you giving your life to Jesus right now? You are? Can I give you a fist bump? Oh, oh. oh my goodness. Oh, it's special. You're a warrior, man. You've been through all kinds of hell on this earth. And God is going to shake all that, dude. You're going to destroy the enemy, man. All those bridges you think you burned? Uh-uh. I, mean, I thought I burned them, too. I did 22 years of horrible, and Jesus repaired every bridge, man. And God's going to give you a bridge to your family that is going to be the most amazing bridge you've ever seen. And you are going to see transformation like you've never seen before. And it's going to be awesome. Do you hear me? I promise, man. Why? Because I'm living it. That's why. Amen? Yes. All right. Everyone, we're going to pray. What we're doing is we're, we're making Jesus our Lord. See, we're not just making him our Savior. See, because when I say yes to Jesus and he becomes my Savior, what happens is he saves me from something. But when he becomes my Lord, he becomes my master. He becomes the one that I live my life from every day and that is where it's at because him being savior is amazing but you don't want to just you don't want to just say yes to incorporate him in because sometimes people with savior he, he just comes in and then all of a sudden they don't surrender everything they don't surrender everything what they do is they just bring him in for what they can get from him but what we're doing is we're saying we want you to be our lord our master our king and when he becomes your king, you come into a royal family. And that's what time it is. Are you ready? I can't right now. I can't. You got to hold on. You got, we'll, we'll pray. Yes. 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 I'm, I'm on it. We're going to do it. I'm on it. Just hold on. I want you all to pray with me right now. I want you to say this. Lord Jesus. Right now. I believe that you died for my sin. And that you raised from the dead. For me to have life I put my faith in you I put my faith in the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost right now I'm asking you to take out this heart of stone and give me a new heart a heart of flesh I thank you that right now you have forgiven me because the Bible says, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord, I shall be saved. So right now, we are committing every prodigal son, every prodigal daughter, all their rebellion. We command it to cease right now. We proclaim them for the kingdom right now. We're saying, come home to the Father right now. Come home to Jesus right now. Come home to the Father right now in Jesus' name. Everybody up here, lift your hands, please. I want you to say this with me. Holy Spirit, right now, we surrender. Right now. We welcome you. Come, fill us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. Fill him. Jesus. 
Jesus, fill them. Come on, Holy Ghost, fill them. Fill them right now. Fill them. Jesus, come right now. Fill these kids right now. Come on. Fill them. Fill. 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 Holy Spirit, come right now. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Baptize people fresh. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I need a ministry team to come up here and help me lay hands on people, please, right now. While we're doing this, if you need a miracle in your life, I want you to stand up to your feet, please. Healing miracles. Yeah, I, 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 I don't need you to help me catch them. I need you to pray for them, lay hands on them. Come on, man. Come on. You need a miracle in your life. Put your hand up. Jesus' name. Father, we thank you right now. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you in the name of Jesus right now. We command healing and wholeness into bodies all over this house. In Jesus' mighty name right now. Father, we thank you. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I want you to put a hand on the person next to you, and we're going to pray right now. We're going to do corporate, corporate body healing, the body of Christ. Look, it's not Christ in Todd, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. When we pray... We're praying for God's kingdom. Listen real quick. We're praying for God's kingdom to come, his will to be done on this earth the same as it is in heaven. Real simple. Jesus defined the kingdom when he said the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So the kingdom is in the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is in you. So when you're praying for God's kingdom to come, you're praying for the Holy Ghost to come up, in, out, and through you and for his will to be done on this earth the same as it is in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven, so it's God's will for it to be on earth the same as it is in heaven. Are you with me? Yeah. All right, so here's what I want you to do. We're just going to work our way through because I've, I have lots of words of knowledge, but it, it, we'll just go through the body. It's easier this way. Are you ready? Okay. Deaf ear. Say this with me. Pray with me, everybody, all over the place. Deaf ear. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. Ear, open. Eyes, we command you, be restored in Jesus' name. Vision, return. Glaucoma, cataracts. Blindness. Blindness. Get, out. Get out in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Floaters, Floaters. Disappear. disappear right now, right now. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Brain, Brain. Be, healed. be healed. Night terrors, Night terrors. Leave. leave in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Sleeping, disorders. Sleeping disorders, be healed, be healed. Right, now. right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Next. Next, be loosed be in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Spinal, cord. Spinal cord, be healed, be healed. right now. In Jesus' name. Nerves. I just pinched nerves in the neck. Be healed right now. In Jesus' name. Right now. Be whole. There are people here that have had accidents. I saw a horse accident. 
I saw a car accident. I saw a truck accident. I saw a skiing accident. I saw all of those. It has to do with your neck area. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Even a football injury from years and from decades ago where you got hit wrong, it had to do with football. You were hit from the side and it jacked your neck up. Right now God's healing it. Who is that? Wave your hand at me. It was a sports, it was a football injury. Be healed in Jesus' name right now. Neck be loosed in Jesus' name. Move your head around. Should be completely gone. What's that feel like? Good? Come on. Shoulders be healed right now in Jesus' name. Just lift your arms up, man. Check them out. Put them down and up. What's that like? Come on. If you've got a shoulder injury, just shoot your arm up right now. Just do it a couple times. Do it three times. One, two, three. And check it. It should be completely healed. Really? I'm not kidding. You were like, nah, uh Yeah, huh? If your shoulder is better right now and you know it, that pain left, wave your hand at me. This isn't complicated. This is like really fun. Everybody gets to play. Because we all have authority to step on the devil's works. That's why. We all have authority to crush the enemy's camp. Come on. There's, there's a, tr- a problem in the trap right back here under your right scapula. I, I don't even know what a scapula is, but I heard it. Is that you? Amen. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. Just be healed right now. Check. Move it around. Check. Oh, that was, I, don't, I never know what a scapula is. That was awesome. What's it feel like? What's it feel like? Is there, come on, that's good. Amen, amen. Lungs, lungs, lung conditions. Father, I thank you. Hey, keep your hand on that person. Come on, because Lord. Come on, Lord. I saw everybody like, come on, this is too long, dude. My arms, just go. Keep your arms down. And if you have a shoulder problem and it's hurting, just keep them on there. It'll be healed. Amen? Come on. Father, we thank you for brand new lungs in Jesus' name. We command lung cancer to leave. We command asthma to leave. We command wholeness into these lungs right now. Breath of God come in Jesus' name. Brand new lungs right now in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. Brand new. I want you, if you had asthma and it was tight in there, I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to check and I want you to see noticeable change right now. I want you to breathe and just check. If you had a lung condition, just take a deep breath. I feel like somebody, actually, good? How's it feel? What's going on? How's your breath? You can breathe. Is it better? I know you can breathe because you're still here. That's good. I love that. I love it. Is, it ch- is there change? Come on, put your hand on your chest. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Lungs, I command you be healed right now. You be healed. Jesus' name. Father, thank you for these brand new lungs in Jesus' name. Yeah. What are you feeling right now? What's that feel like? What's it feel like? It's not good to lie at the altar, man. What's it feel like? Amazing. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Father, we thank you for brand new organs right now. I thank you for pancreas being healed, that diabetes would leave right now. In Jesus' name. That the doctors would be freaked out. That's right. In Jesus' name. Brand new pancreas. Right now. He's removing gallstones right now. Gallstones be removed right now. They told you that you'd have to get your gallbladder removed. God is a professional gallstone cleaner outer in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Brand new. Brand new. Kidney stones get out in Jesus' name. Right now. Brand new. No more kidney stones. Brand new. Brand new kidneys. 
Diabetes has ruined kidney. There's kidney dysfunction. And part of it has to do with diabetic. It's diabetic kidney problems. That's you. Who else? There's more. There should be five people with that. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. We command dialysis to cease and desist in Jesus' name. Brand new kidneys. Lord, we thank you for brand new kidneys. Father, thank you. You're so good. We love you. In Jesus' name, brand new. Brand new. And no more stones. In Jesus' name. Now listen, you got to be married for this one. <laughs> Infertility. You got to be married. Don't play. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. <laughs> Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for fertility. I thank you for babies. In Jesus' name. I thank you for pregnancies where the doctor said, I'm sorry, it can't happen. In Jesus' name. Be pregnant. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. You actually, you're right now, while we're praying this, you're saying, my daughter can't have kids. Who are you? Oh, be healed in Jesus' name. That that daughter would be able to have babies in Jesus' name. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Oh, I love it. We just we just say it. God does it. Yep, we'll pray for you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We will. Mental, mental disabilities, bipolar. God healed me of bipolar. God healed me of all kinds of stuff healed in Jesus name amen put your hand on their head that they're raising their hand for a mental disorder being healed and he has an eye that needs to open so father we thank you in the name of Jesus for complete clarity in the mind we thank you that depression that bipolar that anxiety the reality of the perfect rest of the gospel would come in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for complete wholeness. Neurological conditions in the brain. God, thank you in Jesus' name. Brain be healed right now. In Jesus' name. Lesions on the brain because of MS. In Jesus' name, be healed right now. Wholeness. Complete healing and wholeness right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you. Digestive disorders. Who are you? Put your hand up. I'm not saying that's who you are. I'm saying if you have that symptom in your body, because your identity is a son, a daughter. Your identity is not a sickness. But we do want to see the full manifestation of sickness being healed right now. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for every digestive disorder in this house, for acid reflux, for any kind of irritable bowel syndrome, for any kind of ulcers in the stomach or on the intestinal lining, in Jesus' name. Colitis, be healed, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for any intestinal disorder being healed right now, being whole, in Jesus' name. Blood, be healed in Jesus' name. Brand new. Every blood infection, every blood disorder, hep C, HIV, whatever in the blood, you be healed right now. Be made whole in Jesus' name. Brand new. That God would give you a holy transfusion in Jesus' name. A holy transfusion transfusion. God, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Hips be made whole in Jesus' name. 
be healed right now. Brand new hips. God is giving people hip replacements. I'm serious. I, but you'll need to move it and check it right now in Jesus' name. Brand new hips in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I feel like somebody had a bone spur in their right hip. Like a, in their right hip, like a spur inside of there. God's removing it right now. I need to see where that is. That's the first time I heard that. Is that you in the back? Somebody had a bone spur in their hip. There's like a, a catch in your hip, and it's like a, it's from a spur that's in there. Jesus' name, be healed. Who is that? A hip. Is it a spur? You know, move it. Check it. Move it around. What do you feel? Do you have any pain in there? Amen. Amen. knees now there's a lot <laughs> brand new squishy stuff in there in Jesus name brand new squishy stuff inside of them knees right now brand new stuff in those knees brand new squishy stuff it's okay to say that because it's kind of it, if you could feel it it'd be squishy Jesus name people are like that's silly No, it, that's because it's not a smart prayer It's not prayer that heals the sick, it's Him. It's faith. So God, we thank you for brand new knees, brand new cartilage, connective tissue, brand new ACLs. That's squishy stuff, come on. Brand new ankles in Jesus' name. Be healed right now. Be healed. Be made whole. Wow. Your memory has been going. You just can't remember things like you used to. I, I, there's, I really heard that really like someone's actually pulling on that. I could hear it in my heart. Who was that? You were. Put your hand on your head. I just like, okay. Whew, I could feel the Holy Ghost up there. In Jesus' name, memory be restored. Right now. sharpness and accuracy laser like accuracy God is putting in you the wisdom of God the wisdom and counsel the sevenfold spirit of God was upon Jesus the spirit of wisdom and counsel God thank you in Jesus name clarity clarity I almost feel like there was a medicine that interrupted something with the thought process, with thinking. It, it dulled down your, your memory, but your sharpness. But it was from a medication that you took. Who is that? Wave your hand at me so I can see it. Yeah, God's healing it right now. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Clarity. In Jesus' name, clarity. Jesus name now I don't know why this is a stretch for me but like when they started praying for you I saw ice skating I don't even know what that means did you used to ice skate okay did you have some kind of something that happened that stopped you from doing this okay all right I, I saw like you spinning like I'm talking like ice skating you used to do it Okay, good, because that was freaking me out. <laughs> I never saw that before. I just got a picture of you going. <laughs> you don't get out in the ice because of protection of your brain. So it's kind of like I've got to be careful on the ice. So God wants to give you that back because that was a love that you had in your life. So Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for that returning right now. Jesus name brain you be healed right now be completely restored and you go go for your passion because you were really good at it father I thank you in Jesus name that was crazy half of this stuff with God I, I, I fall into like oh my gosh what was that and he's such a good dad he's like oh that was me son but you never know that you're hearing God unless you're willing to risk it. 
faith is spelled R-I-S-K. And you have to get past you because here, watch, deny yourself. Watch, we're afraid of looking foolish. We're afraid of sharing with somebody and us not being correct. Man, you've got to be willing to be a fool for God to live this thing. We're so perfection oriented. We're so want to be perfect. We so don't want to make a mistake. We so don't want to mess it up. Man, God is really big. Like we get this picture that if we're going to pray for somebody and they don't get healed when we pray, that we let God down. You ain't big enough to let God down. Are you, are you, are you hearing that? Like this is a big deal. Do you know that when you reach out, when you step out and pray for somebody, do you know what I believe God's doing? Gabriel, watch. Look. It's my boy. Look at him. People are like, I'm serious. The father's like, Michael, do you see this? He's stepping out again. Wow. He's not caring about himself at all. He's caring about the kingdom. He's caring about me. Whoo. Go get him, boys. Come on, angels have been sitting around for decades and decades waiting for the church to do something with the word. Are you with me? Come on. Put your hand on somebody beside you again. We're just going to pray again. You guys all right? I love Jesus, buddy. He's so good. Just say this in the name of Jesus. Make this one bold for the kingdom. Possess them with the Holy Ghost. Increase your presence in their life. Let them affect everybody that they come in contact with. Let them be fully surrendered, submitted, yielded, filled, possessed by Jesus. We love you and we thank you, Lord. All right, just real quick. If you've been healed tonight and you know that you know that you know that there's change in your body, I want you to wave both hands over your head right now. No, I want you guys to look around. Look around. If you've been healed tonight, wave both hands over your head. Can you guys give Jesus a big, huge shout of praise? Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. There's no question that the world is filled with confusion, terror, division, moral decline, desperation, fear, you name it. Darkness has never seemed so thick, but we believe there has never been a generation more ready for change, for hope, for truth, for real love. We love because Jesus first loved us. We are not a hopeless generation. The time is now to live the impossible and love like Jesus. Jesus in us will shape the culture around us. Jesus in us will transform nations. Wherever you are, you can be the change you want to see. You can live the lifestyle Jesus paid for on the cross right now. Be transformed by love and equipped in community to boldly bring kingdom transformation to your city, your workplace, your school, your home. The change starts with you.